471 Aussie Tech Heads. Welcome, welcome to another week. It's the week of the 21st of the 1st, 2016. And have we got a great big show, heaps of stories, interesting stories that we've come across through the week. And we thought it'd be interesting enough to let you guys know about them. So thanks for joining us. We have uh, been brought to you all this time and continue to be brought to you by athwebhosting.com.au. Okay, let's go and say hello to whoever we've got here tonight to who is going to help us get through some stories and keep you up to date. Shane, how you going, Shane? I'm um, well. Yourselves? Not too bad, thanks. Uh, what have you been up to? Anything exciting? Oh, just a couple more job interviews. Had another one today with a um, a software company that's in the medical kind of industry. So the right. my last job also working in the medical industry kind of hopefully will help me out for that. And um, still haven't heard anything from the the other jobs from Crown. a couple of weeks ago mm. now. All right. So that's frustrating, but you know, yeah, at least takes a while. No, takes a while. It takes a while. Uh, all right. And uh, Eric, hey Eric. Hello, mate. How's How you been? Going? Good, thanks. Now, we didn't see you last week. What have you been up to? I've been on vacation. How good's that? Yeah, yeah. very good. You look tan, too. Oh, I know, and I've, I've done a bit of skin whitener on, the, on, my, on my camera here, so I'm a bit darker than what you're seeing. <laughs> right. <laughs> you just blend in with the night sky. Uh, all, the planet, right. all the planets are aligned, apparently. That's right. Hmm. Uh, that's good. So you're all back into it, back to work, and uh, everyone's... Yeah. Uh, yeah. It is that got to that stage of the year, hasn't it? Like, every, all the holidays are over. It's uh, just holidays ago, work. January. Whew, you know, I'm not motivated. I, I could go to sleep right now. <laughs> <laughs> I had a little little uh, nana nap this afternoon. Actually, oh, did you yes. have a bit of a bex and a lie down? Yeah, that's right. For headache, pain and fever. That's right. Oh, I used to yeah. love it. <laughs> Remember the old ladies who used to walk past the pub and they'd just yeah. be all hanging out there just sniffing their becks and tipping it into their drinks and all this sort of stuff. But, um, yeah, but, they just full on, weren't they? I think they got a lot of liver failure from those ads. <laughs> Too much aspirin. Yeah, but it was is pretty... That, is, is that the stuff that's in those little kind of... It was folded in those little, like, rolly paper kind yes. of thingos? Yeah, yes. my mum used aspirin. to do that. A yeah. lot of aspirin. Was it? And, uh, everyone, yeah, that's all it was, aspirin. But um, but it worked. Aspirin does work. It's still the best pain reliever that you mm. can get. Good for your heart as well. But if you take too much of it, your liver f- falls out of your ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, so that, that's a warning, a medicinal warning from uh, E. Franco. 30 milligrams <laughs> of aspirin per day, no more. Mm. All right. Well, let's get into some of the things that have been going around this week. Now, here's one that uh, when I re- was reading this, I thought, oh, no, because I thought it was going to apply to Eric. But uh, as I read through, uh, it didn't, thankfully. Otherwise, he well, would have... not yet, anyway. We'll it would have, his head would have exploded. Um, fire fears force Microsoft to recall Surface power cords. Oh, no. Mm. <laughs> but uh, thankfully... It's only on the Surface Pro 2 and uh, Surface Pro 3. And I say that thankfully. Uh, that's, not, of course, if you don't have a, uh, a 2 and a 3. If you do have, it's no good, is it? But anyway, as a result of damage caused by AC power cord being wound too tightly, twisted or pinched over an extended period of time, a very small proportion of Surface Pro customers have reported issues with the power cord. Uh, Microsoft has come out and said in their blog post, we will, be, we, we will be releasing details of how customers can obtain a free replacement cable shortly. So there you go. Now, this applies to those particular devices that I've already mentioned, and they would have been sold before 15th of July 2015. Mm, so, uh, by mine. Yeah, but yours is a four. November. Yours is a four, though. Yeah, it's a four. I got a four. Now, Surface Pro 4 expected to be unaffected by the power supply recall that was released late last year, uh, but it has been suffering from stock shortages. So there you go. They've been pretty. The Surface 4 or the actual power supply? All the four. Right. The four. So, look, you know, you've you've seen them on the cricket. They've they've been pumping the ads through the cricket. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Massive ads. Yeah, the cricket's got the big Microsoft screen, and they're all using Skype and all this sort of stuff. Look, Microsoft's getting into this space, aren't they? They're uh, they're, they're pretty hungry for it. It's uh, funny because um, you think Apple would start sort of trying to make some inroads because it is media. Apple are known to be, Hmm. their products are known to be best for media. You think they'd be pushing it to broadcast. You know, everyone looks at iPads or, you know, all that, but they're not completely silent. Yeah, well, I suppose I don't know why that would be, but uh, that's that is how it is. Look, look, but they've got a good rep to to carry on with. They they probably don't need the the advertising at this stage. I think. Well, that's probably true. You know, like if you, 
I think the tablet market is pretty saturated from from all reports. So, yeah. you know, I think it's more people just moving around now in that space. Just uh, you know, maybe thinking, well, I've had the iPad. Maybe Microsoft's come along. I should try that or uh, whatever. Well, I think they're making good inroads from from mm. all, all, all reports, which is which is. Good. Well, you're still happy with yours. Yep. Yeah. Did yeah, you? Did you touch- I like the fact that it's it's touch screen, it's pen, and it's a laptop. Yes. So whatever mood I'm in, I can go. I don't feel like touching today. I'll just flip it up on its side, <laughs> yes. and uh, off you go typing on the on the backlit screen, so I can do it at night time and yeah, whatnot. You know, it's just it's just very very versatile. Did you take it on holidays with you? I did. Nice, nice. And has, it's I, got a camera and everything in it. Front and back. Nice. Now front the only th- back. so I can do selfies. <laughs> oh, please don't post any. Now, no, <laughs> now the only thing I don't know if it's got does it have a GPS? No, it does not. Oh, yes, it does. It does. Right. Oh, that's okay. But I think it. I think it. I, but I'm not sure it uses a GPS. I think it uses the old tri- triangulation technology. Oh, that old Wi-Fi. chestnut. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. All right. Well, so that's the yeah Surface Pro Four. If if you've got a two, three, but it, like just just sorry, just before I end on that, I was just going to finish. But uh, it says here, look, if the result of what was happening was this problem was because the AC power cords being wound too tightly, twisted or pinched. Well, really, you're not supposed to run a power cord if it's if it is wound, are you? Yeah, I think it's when they like, pack it up. I think that's what they're talking about. You know, when you pack it up, put it in your bag. Right. Okay. So they wind it too tightly. I never do that. I always because you do that with any yeah that's uh, right. laptop um, power cord, and it's going to split. Mm. I tend to have mine in big loops. So yes. It's more round, round, yeah. rounded, rather and, than rather than. Yeah, and I think like I've always been told that if you you've got a ten meter extension cord and you only want to just say extend a meter, well, you shouldn't just leave it all wound up. Become, yeah, that's right. Be, that's be right. like a coil. Un- unwind it. Leave yeah. it on the floor under your desk or something. Yeah, just a bit more looser than, than wound. Okay. Got to be loose as a goose. Goosey loosey. Now, I've been. Uh, I've got another little story here it's related to Microsoft, so I'll do that straight up. Uh, Microsoft is going to donate a billion dollars worth of cloud services, but only to... To Yarloop. To who? To Yarloop. What's Yarloop? Yeah, Loop is the country town over here. They got devastated by the bushfires. Oh, they're going to get some. I don't know. You, you're reading the story. Oh, okay. Uh, now, Microsoft <laughs> is set to donate a billion dollars to cloud, but only for non-profit organisations and universities. So, Sacha Nadella says that the plan is to give the same cloud tools to non-profit charities and researchers that might not be able to afford it. So, that's not a bad idea. And look, obviously. He uh, hopes to gain business out of it, and otherwise it's... Oh, of course, because you give them cloud stuff to a university, for example, hmm. and they renew their licenses for Office. That's right. For Be- example. Yeah, because... Uh, or, and keep they might upgrade their Windows because, oh, well, you know, we've got we've saved yes. so much money on OneDrive, or whatever yes. they're going to call it for them, that we, we can afford now to update our computers. Yeah, because the, the services that will be specifically included are the Azure, the Enterprise Mobility Suite, the CRM Online, and Office 365... Now, as far as I can see, and what this uh, story was saying, that you will need the, an Office 365 account to start getting this free stuff. So right. there you go. That's the rub, if you want to call it that. Uh, it's, a, it's estimated to reach over 70,000 non-profit and non-governmental organisations globally over the next three years. I suppose oh, 70,000 uh, entities is not a great deal. I think when not, you, not globally. No, I think... But the, that's over three years. Obviously, after another three years might be another 70,000. Long, yeah. Long-term plan. Yeah, because I think when I saw that 70,000, I thought, well, who is going to like actually get this? Because I heard a stat not long ago, I'm not sure if I mentioned it on the show, but in Australia, there's something like 64,000 registered charities just in Australia. Oh, really? Yeah, so it's, it's a massive amount. And, you know, like, you don't have to be the, uh, you know, some Vinnies or all this. It's probably, like, you know, little... Oh, there's a lot of the little charities little as well. Things. You know, the local, the local um, you know, cricket club. Yeah, yeah. The non-profit. Yeah. Know? But, uh, yes, there's a lot of charities. All right. Uh, okay, so that's well done to Microsoft. I think that's a good idea. And, yeah, well, they're getting their name and their business out there. And, yeah, good luck to them. Especially in the universities. That's where it's at. All right, yep. uh, Shane, what have you got for us this week? Uh I have a question. I have a statement mm. and a question about what we just talked about. 
statement is is that that section um Nadella, he was at the uh, State of the Union address. He was in the um, in the auditorium or whatever they call it. Right. He was sitting, um, yeah, just right. a couple of down from I think it's called the, uh, what's it called? Not the, the House, Congress House, or? Of, High House of Congress, something like that. Yeah, yeah something so he like was there. Yeah, I know what you mean. Satya Nadella, yes. Yeah. And he was there as a as an audience member or wherever. Mm. Could you, uh, is, that's not open to the public, obviously. You, you now you've got to be invited to that, I'm assuming. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Can you uh, tell the dummy like me what the state of the union address is i'll probably have a fair guess, oh look but... every year the the president of the united states and this is just a quick summary addresses the the country and it gives them you know the state of the union the oh. union being the 50 states right they're all u- unified because they're all separate states until you mr washington decided to kick some but so the state Quite of the right. union basically addresses that right and it's probably like an update if you like. They, here we call it something boring like, you know, budget update. Uh, they okay. call it State of the Union, a bit more dramatic, you know. Yep. And it's in, okay. invite only, and it's a bit more... Um, Sounds a lot like a... Theatrical. Like a, yeah, yeah, like a pep talk. Right. Yeah, a bit more theatrical. Not, well, not so... Um, well, old mate's, factual. old mate's nearly finished. He'd be, well, this would be his last one then, wouldn't it? Oh, uh, thank God. Obama? Yes, it will his be his last, last one because the election's in November this year. Hmm. Yeah, and it looks like old Donny. He's kicking. He's kicking some no, it, some goals. I'll put my money. I'll put money on the table right now. Fifty bucks. It's Cruz. Oh, that, that's a big call though. Cause no, not that. Donny not reckons. Really. Donny reckons he's not born in America. And they reckon he's. Donny gonna... reckons. <laughs> Donny Donald Trump reckons Barack Obama was born in Libya, Kenya, or somewhere. Or Kenya. <laughs> yes. Or right, well, and, and here, show us your birth certificate. He keeps saying. Well, I think Shane's got a story coming up about something to do with old Donny, but uh, I don't know if he wants to do that one now. Well, we wait till uh, we get to it. But what? What have you finished uh, stating and questioning that previous story? No, the question that I had was in relation to the whole um, yeah, charities and stuff. Because hmm. there was a story, I think it might have been on a current affair or one of those programs about that whole um, GoFundMe type pages. Yeah, and you know, how you get people who sort of say. You know, little Johnny's got, you know, we got robbed over Christmas or our house burnt down. Can you go to this GoFundMe page and give us a truckload of money so we can buy them new presents? Yes. Yeah, it's a scam. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, there was a guy that came on and basically said, you know, you can't basically just call yourself a charity. <laughs> no. Yeah. You see, the thing is, I thought this GoFundMe thing, I think people have just taken this for granted because my idea of what the those, you know, the crowdfunding is that if you've got a, a product you want to build, and this is how it started in the states. That, and the v- the VCs, the venture capitalists, won't give you any money. So you think, okay, I'll raise um, twenty dollars a person minimum, and wh- whoever I get money from, I'll give them a product. Like you know, because you can't give a hundred thousand people shares. Yeah, I think it's against the rules, right? So for the money you give me, I will give you a product. So for example, if I was if I was a singer, a songwriter. I think, right, I need to fund my studio time and I need the money to publish my CD. So if everyone that gives me money, I'll give them a copy of my CD. Mm. Right? Yeah. And that's what yeah. I thought the purpose was it for. Not, um, boo-hoo, I'm an idiot. I didn't get house insurance, so yes. go on there and uh, feel sorry for me and uh, buy well, me a house. Well, that's how it is. Look, I've just, I've just loaded up, at, load the uh, site up here. Let's pick one. Say this one here looks pretty... Strange to say the least, but let's have a look. If it's anything too serious, I'll quit it. But uh, uh, if there's one thing I've learned in my career. Let's have a look what she's doing. What, what save Kennedy Davenport's home? This is probably one thing you're sort of on about. What is she doing? She must have been well. Kennedy Davenport looks like she needs a home. <laughs> yes, the campaign is still going. So, to get into the, what is she doing here? I will attempt to make a look. as many of you know, my father passed away and it was. Unexpected event. He unfortunately don't have a will. I spent a year cooperating with the process of probate on our childhood home left behind, all while making monthly mortgage payments. The bind that I'm now currently facing is that the mortgage company has decided I can no longer continue on a payment plan system. Instead, I, oh, a payment plan system. What does that mean? So she kind of she's on a system already. She's on. An, she was yeah. on an arrangement. Yeah, I must make a final balloon payment of thirty-three thousand, or we'll lose the house. My sisters, nieces, and myself depend. Oh, I don't know. You, you don't know. I don't know. 
You can look. Look, I understand their predicament. Yeah, I know. That's not what it's for. Yeah, I know. It's not what it's for. Here's an idea: sell a house. Well, you only owe thirty three thousand dollars on it. Surely it's worth more than that. Yeah, but I suppose look, that's probably not the 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 best financial thing to do in the long term. No, is it? But I'm going to play devil's advocate here, right? Mm. If if you're in any other country, you lose your job and you can't make payments. You sell your house and you move to more modest accommodations until you get back on your feet. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Why Why would I put my hand out because something bad happened to me and expect people to pay my kids' school fees or, you know, save my house? Yeah. Right? We've got, to, we've got to start taking responsibility. Even if it was not your fault, you know, it's bad luck. That's life. That happens to everybody. Mm. People lose their houses all the time through no fault of their own. And, they, you know, 50 years ago or even when your parents were young, if something happened... Just you don't have to go down the middle of the street with a bucket, yeah, yeah. and say, "Go fund me." <laughs> but anyway, old Kennedy Davenport, she's up to twenty nine thousand odd. So that's crazy stuff. Crazy stuff. Yeah. So I, uh, I, I guess I'm, I'm against that for the for mm. those unworthy. I'm well, not saying she's an unworthy recipient, but cr- crowdfunding is for products. And I think uh, I think. Um, I was going to say, yeah, so like the, the GoFundMe site would also take a percentage of that as well. Oh, of course. They've got, so, yeah, of course. They've got admin costs and mm. everything else that they have to meet, and they can't work for free either. Mm. But anyway, at the end of the day, I'm, look, I'm, I'm glad that she looks like she's got enough money to stay in the house. So that was a good outcome for her. And, well, here's um, an idea. Good on Stop you. spending less money on feather boas and a hook <laughs> outfits that you'd wear down at Hooters, and you might be able to afford to stay there. <laughs> All right. Now, uh, Shane, what, where are you... Taking us. I will do that jump story. Um, when right. you originally brought that up, I thought, I have no idea what you're talking about. Do you want me to do that or do you want me to yep. give Eric a go? Move into, no, go for it. I'm go sure Eric it. will have a go I'll, on Trump. I'll have something to say, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Trump says he will force Apple to manufacture in the US, even though that makes absolutely no sense. US presidential candidate and angry sweet potato... <laughs> <laughs> Is that what it says? Is that what it is? Angry yeah. sweet potato. Angry sweet potato. <laughs> Don't really know what the reference is, other than his complexion. Maybe. He probably looks like a sweet potato. I think it's his scone. <laughs> <laughs> Donald Trump claims he will be able to change Apple's entire manufacturing system if he is elected president. First, in the span of few of few sentences, he insisted he'd impose a thirty five percent tax on businesses producing goods overseas while claiming to support free trade. At the end of his uh, rambling speech, he said this, we're going to get Apple to build their damn computers in this country instead of other countries. The US president does not have the power to ban a company from outsourcing, nor does the president have the power to completely overhaul the global economy. Trump Trump could advocate or legis- uh, for legislation designed to prevent outsourcing, but he would have to uh, champion laws that would fundamentally alter free trade to make it financially adv- advantageous for Apple to upend its manufacturing supply chain. Apple outsources because it maximises profit, mm. but that's not the only reason. Asia's e- uh, electronic supply chains are much larger than what is in the US. That's right. Well... Look, uh, my initial. Do you want to react first, Eric, or should I react? No, no. I'm waiting. For, I, I want. I want to you know, be able to shoot both barrels. So you go for it. Okay. Well, my rea- my first reaction is I think that that article, whatever that was written, is probably pretty poor. Uh, I think it just pretends that the reader is a bit of a dope because I don't think Trump is actually he he's not going to make make apple do anything he's he i suppose he, yeah, he just wants to raise taxes if it's made overseas and look i i can see the the merit in the idea but i find think it's going to be very hard for him to implement but like at the end of the day like he's saying well he, he just he's probably chosen apple as a uh everyone knows it it's that's you know brought it down to the the person on the street level apple everyone knows about him and yeah, the idea is probably sound, but uh, I don't know if it's going to if it's going to be implemented. Why not? Why not make stuff in your own country? That's what wrong with our place. Everything's well, made overseas. No, no, it's not as simple as that. It's called the comparative advantage of economics, mm. right? And it's been going on for 
since the Industrial Revolution, you will make your goods, and 100 years ago, or was it, you know, early 19th century, 100 years ago, when, you know, everyone was in, it started in England, the Industrial Revolution started in England, everyone was making, it was mainly, mainly steel, which then graduated to America, and all the steel barons started there. Now, it came to the point that even they were doing it. If it was too expensive to make steel in um, London, yeah. they'd get it made in Manchester. But it's still the right? same country. Doesn't no, but but back then states had their own were responsible right. for their own economy. Okay. You're right. Yep. Yep. Um, and now this making it in chi- China or Taiwan or India or Sri Lanka or Fiji or any other places, you know, Eastern Europe is the next one. Um, it's the same thing. Why? Because you see, the thing is, the reason Australian manufacturing is not happening here now is because we can't compete. That's right. No one is going to buy Australian goods if it's made here because they're going to be too expensive. Yes. It's just, just not going to happen. You know, I'm not going to pay um, $400 for a T-shirt because some union lackey has had 340 days off out of 365 because that's what, that's what some dealer he did. But mm. he's, and he's on 80 grand a year. And that, you go to the, to the car industry. The reason the car industry is shut down here is because the average wage, for example, of the people that you work at Toyota, average wage, not the highest wage or management wage, the average wage from the lowest paid worker to the highest paid worker yeah. was $96,000 per year. Yeah, right? nice. You're on a production line, you left school in year 10, you have no education, and you're earning $96,000 a year. Mm. And, a- and they're building cars, Holden cars, or that's Holden was a classic case. They're building them, uh, Holdens here that are selling for as much as BMWs or Mercedes Benzes. And the quality was rubbish. Mm. Why would I pay $55,000 for a Monaro when I can pay less for a Mercedes Benz? And the reason I could pay less for a Mercedes Benz is because they have no unions and it's all robotics. Yeah, yeah. No, well- no staff. It's Robots don't take sickies. They don't mm. go on strike, and they don't argue with you. Well, I think. Yeah, well, then it's got to be. Look, the the look. I can't see the <laughs> the problem getting fixed anytime soon. But uh, it's not gonna, this is not going to happen. The number one, like Shane said, you can't change the global economy. Number one, the free trade no. agreement uh, in with every country, every developed country in the world that they've got would fall to pieces. They would become insular all mm. of a sudden. Their goods would be too expensive. They'd become North Korea. But would Basically. they? But they they got like a fair decent population. Would, would at the end of the day, if they, if they started to manufacture everything themselves, well, doesn't matter because people go about still got to have the money to pay for it. If suddenly their their Apple products went from two thousand dollars to four thousand dollars, you still got to earn an extra two thousand dollars to pay for it. And I guarantee you, the bloke you're working for is not going to pay you that because his costs have just gone through the roof too. Hmm. He's not going to put his wages up because suddenly everything he's all his other costs to running his business. Have also gone up thanks to the old DT. <laughs> it's not going to work. They become they become North Korea. It's not going to work. And number two, he can't just blanket change the tax system without getting agreement from both houses. Well, he, he likes North Korea. He likes Kim Un Jung or whatever his name. Yeah, is. I know he does. Mm. <laughs> or he buys him. He's, That's oh. why I'm putting fifty dollars on the table right now. It'll be Cruz that'll win a nomination. He's going he to get, may not win the presidency, but he'll win the nomination. He's going to get the upset. Republican nomination. Yeah. He's going to get upset. <laughs> no, he's not going to get upset. <laughs> All right. Well, I, I'm, I'm too much video. I think eventually people are going to wake up to that. Well, I, I think we spoke about this, but I, th- I, I reckon I, I'm probably with you. I reckon he's just out there. He's out there to to, to soften the blow of some of the harsher. Or, well, or I think some people might. It, you're right. I know what you're saying, and he, you're absolutely right. What he's doing, he wants to point out because he's the guy that's not scared to say anything. He says what everyone else is thinking when it when it comes to the Democrats. You know, he'll call Hillary a liar and, and this and that and the other. Mm. And he's thinking, and everyone's just saying, look, he's out there. He's the attack dog. Yeah, you know, it's like the guy in the front line. Yep. In a in a war, yeah. soften the enemy up, and then we'll we'll come in. Our, our, our SAS will come in at, through the back door and just wipe everyone yeah. out. So he's saying, what he's, doing. he's saying, build a 20-metre wall, uh, everyone's up in arms, sort of goes, okay, well, geez, that's no good. Cruz will come in and says, okay, we'll still build a wall, but we'll only make it 10 metres. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right it's the old no ambush lane, you know, like mm. the unions do. We want a 500% pay rise. We'll give you two, all right. All right. <laughs> <That's> right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, did you got any stories, Eric, or are you just commenting tonight? I'm commenting on this all right uh, today okay 
Good. Now, how about this one? Uh, Uber Technologies is working with Airbus to provide a on-demand helicopter service. How cool would that be? How expensive would it be? Well, it, well Uber co-founder Travis Kalanick said, the point is that you can push a button and get a ride, then why not push a button and get a helicopter? <laughs> yeah, sure, why not? Take me down to the servo. Helicopter, where are you going to land? Uh, he said, uh, India, where Uber last year committed uh, investing $1 billion US dollars, holds one of the biggest opportunities for the company as more Indians start using smartphones. Well, that's the home of taxis. On, that, that doesn't make sense. Yes, they're using smartphones, but I don't know many Indians. There's only 1% of India live above the poverty line. How many of those people are going to be ordering helicopters? No, well, this is this is something. This has moved on. Sorry, this is moved. So, oh, okay. helicopters, okay. helicopters here, at US, uh, and go go mobiles in India. <laughs> if they release the, if they do the helicopter thing over here in Australia at any time soon, they should get Bromham Bishop to do the ads. <laughs> well, oh, that'd yeah. be funny, wouldn't it? Then she won't want to pay for it though. No, <laughs> no she get a free she... ride. But uh, but yeah, so but uh, but like in India, can you imagine? I thought everyone was a taxi driver anyway. So like, yeah, well, that's why they're up in arms, mate. <laughs> it's uh, U- U.S. Uber, U.S. based Uber has now forty percent share in, in the Indian market, compared to four percent last year. So mm. it's, it's going gangbusters. Well, look, they're, probably, they're probably paying the, their drivers more, obviously. So yeah, yeah, you know, yep. Yeah. All right, uh, Shane, please continue. Okay. I will. I'm not used to coming around to me so quick. Um, all right, I'll do the Netflix story, one of them. Netflix closes in on VPN loophole. Oh. Unblock, unblockus.com is unfazed. Despite the presence of Netflix locally, Australians are among users who use virtual private networks, VPNs, or unblocking sites to access more content-rich versions of Netflix in the US. The fact users, the fact users get around this geo-block has aggravated Netflix, strangely enough, local competitors because they in the US, Netflix often uh, has the rights to movies and TV series that these local competitors have the Australian rights to. Are you going to say something, Glenn? I just I don't think that Netflix gives a toss it, whether people whether people use it or not, whether from overseas through VPN or whatever. They're still making their money. I don't think they give a toss. It's, yeah. the, it's the it's the the other dudes that do the content creators. But anyway, sorry. Uh, okay. No, that's fair enough. Uh, what do I get up to? On the back of... Uh, uh, the fact that, uh, On the back of pressure from these rivals, Netflix several times has signalled its intentions to close this loophole and stop customers geo-skipping out of the country they are in. But these attempts have seemed half-hearted. Even now, an Australian Netflix c- customer with a local account can access US content with the same account. You can sign up for to a Netflix with an Australian credit card in Australia and still access the wider US Netflix media library using an unblocking service, which is what Eric was saying a few weeks ago. Mm. Uh, yeah. And in a blog post this week, Netflix Vice President of Content Delivery Architecture, David Fulliger, 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 yeah. Uh, said that the streaming service would move to nullify the unblocking services, thereby forcing viewers to watch Netflix content available from where they are watching. But one of the unblocking services has signalled it will fight the move. Unblockus.com charges uh, users around $5 per month for a service that lets them choose the country Netflix library that they wish to access. And then they select it from a drop-down menu, and then they also offer geo selection to other streaming services such as Hulu. A spokesperson for UnblockUs.com indicated that they are unfazed by Netflix's uh, decree and will fight the move. The spokesperson said that the company's mission is to provide its customers with open and free access to content from anywhere around the world. This is the Unblock Us people that said that. Netflix says that it's over over time that it hopes to offer its content uh, anywhere and as the Australian reports, us uh, US companies such as Google are seeking for government to rewrite copyright law they regard as more 
appropriate in the digital age. But Netflix also faces the prospect of local media companies forming alliances with overseas content providers to collectively outbid the US streaming service or make buying content much more expensive. I suppose that would be the only reason why they would give a, a toss, is because, yeah, because if, if the copyright provider's got jack of it, and they said, well, okay, we'll go with someone else. Uh, but, yeah, look, uh, so how do they block them? How is Netflix supposed to block the VPNs? Is it they, they just get a, a whiff of what IP addresses these people are using? Uh, that, that, no, 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 that they can't. Work. no, they can't, because the IP address they give you on a VPN for another you know, hotspot, in, yeah, um, a US IP address. What it is, I I suspect, is that when you sign up for it, you, they ask you where you are. But wouldn't wouldn't unblock us or whoever it is, it's, you know, one of these VPN services? Wouldn't they? They'd be assigned. How do they get access to this IP address? They must be assigned a, a chunk of IP addresses. Yeah, that's right. They do. They get okay, chunk right. of IP address, but they so, run a. They could run through one IP address and just run everyone through the one router, one big router. Yeah, but if, if Netflix says, okay, we know this IP address is from Unblock Us, well, we're just going to block that IP address. We're going to block that range that has been given. Yes, but it's illegal to block your own country unless you've got a good reason. It's just, just suspecting is not good enough, I don't think. No, well, I, I think it's more when you sign up for Netflix, it asks you your name, address, where you live, what your address is, your credit card is an Australian credit card. But That's you can, how I reckon they find out. No, I, I can block IP addresses... On web on my web pages, I just go. I don't like this IP address. I block it. They can't get that. Okay. So yeah, well, okay. I just reckon this, the story did say that the options that are available to them, and then it went on to say that they don't work for various reasons. You can't block the IP address um, because the VPN terminates with the VPN provider and not at the not at Netflix itself. Even if you do a reverse DNS and then you notice that it's actually a VPN provider that's providing the IP address and not actually coming from, say, the person's ISP. Um, again, you could that would work until obviously it, it, it's one of those whack a mole kind of things. You mm. institute something and then they change it, so you're always kind of chasing your tail. Yeah. And then, as far as the whole credit card thing goes, you weren't actually here when I read that part of the story, Eric. But okay, um, it, it no, it confirmed what you were saying the other week about you can actually have an Australian account and use that account to access um, American content via a VPN service. Yeah. Um, I mean, they don't like it, but they basically said, yeah, you can't go on someone's credit card because what happens if they happen to be on holiday for a month in the, in the US mm. and then you know, they can use it legitimately over there while they're on holiday? Yeah, that's true. Maybe they should just have a spelling test. Spell jail. And if you spell it J A I L, you don't get access. You're American. You're American. Yeah. Welcome. Here's some fried chicken. <laughs> or color, or mother, or, or yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now, just further to the uh, Netflix story, because I, I I went and got some more uh, data, because that's what I felt like doing. Is uh, well, put you, you didn't research it properly, did you, Glenn? I did a little bit of. Oh, this is just uh, just other stuff to throw in, but just about more the finance. I don't know why I'm drawn to figures. But the firm said that Netflix said it added a record 5.5 million customers in the three months to December, bringing, and this is apparently the first time that they've actually disclosed uh, their membership numbers. But how would you, how many would you guess? What, what do you reckon that the membership number is uh, for Netflix? Do you want to have over a guess? Here or over there? There? Well, it's just said Netflix. So let's assume that it's. Global. It's a, so you'd have to be thinking, okay, well, it's probably not individual. It's probably households. So that means so every every one subscription probably may do say four people. But but we'll have a guess. Do you want to have a guess? I'll just tell you. It's uh the total membership is seventy four point seven six million. So, all right, let's do the maths, shall we? Okay. Um, all right. Let's assume that the average subscription is ten dollars per month. Yep. That's a hundred and times twelve months. That's a hundred and twenty dollars a year. Yeah. Times how many million? Seventy four point seven six. Seventy four point seven six oh. Seventy four million. They that's eight point nine billion dollars a year in revenue. That's not bad. Now, because now the other reason why I did bring these stats up because the the figures get a bit. Uh, 
I don't know. I'll, well, you'll see. But anyway, so earlier this month, the firm said it expanded to more than 130 countries. Despite its growing subscriber numbers, Netflix profits fell in the three months to December from a year earlier, although it said its earning numbers are still positive. That's okay. because they're expanding. All the setup costs in Australia and whatnot, be like, buying, be... buying rights for more movies and all that sort of stuff. That's mm. all upfront stuff that they lose. So their rights, so of that $15, or of that $10 per subscription, do you reckon they were, what would they keep? One or two, do you reckon? Like as in uh, content providers? Two. Maybe would... two. Yeah? Okay. They've got to pay staff. You know, their infrastructure costs would be huge. But say how um, much... What, what their licensing, per... their royalties. Yeah, so what percentage do you think would go to the create content creators? That'd be like 80%, wouldn't it, do you reckon? No, it wouldn't be that much. Because they'd have nothing left. Eighty percent. You got twenty percent to pay staff, premises, yeah, bandwidth if, costs. But of six sixty billion or whatever you said, that's a lot, a lot of change. Uh, well, no. Well, they still got to make a profit too. Well, on earnings, they stayed profitable in quarter four, despite foreign exchange headwinds. They 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 said, and delivered an operating income of sixty million. So in the quarter. For the quarter, so what's that? Uh, okay, eight, let's say nine billion divided by four. Is that right? Is that nine billion? Nine billion. Let me just get that up. That's <laughs> ninety thousand nine hundred nine million ninety million nine hundred million nine billion divided by. Um, so it's less than one percent of their turnover. Right. So their profit. That's not a lot. No, it doesn't sound right. No, well, I suppose that, well, anyway, the company shares have gone up 124% in the last 12 months, so that's good. But yeah, so I just thought for that um, that massive amount of income, to have that net, that small net profit, I think, yeah, where does it all go? Or do the content creators take that much? Where does it go? Yeah, like, um, that's an interesting one. But I suppose... I know that they announced a couple of weeks ago, was it last week even, that they are going to spend quite a bit of money creating new content in the next... Four months or so, yeah, it's something like nine hundred million or six hundred mm. million dollars. And I suppose and that's that... more than that's more than some of the studios spend in a year. Yeah, you know, you spend you you get a, a, a big studio will spend you know a hundred million bucks on a blockbuster movie, mm. and that's one movie. Yeah, and well, these guys are going to spend six hundred million. Well, I suppose they just want to get the get it off the ground, don't they? Say, hey, we are well, serious. Well, it's off the ground. It was founded in ninety seven. Mm. Well, just just hopefully they uh, in they get Will Smith to star in a few of them. Star yeah, so his wife can go to the Academy Awards. <laughs> we don't want to see her again. Now, no, I don't care if she turns up or not. <laughs> I'm sure no one does. Now, now while we're sticking with numbers, uh, what about the largest known prime number has been discovered? Well, when I, I think we did one of these before, but it, they they're not discovered. They're they're unearthed are calculated they? yeah cal- because like the number still exists always they've been there yeah, yeah. The, the largest known prime number has been discovered by a computer at a university in missouri so do we know what a prime number is uh, a number that visible cal- by itself and one yep such as two three five seven uh and so forth and they all these prime numbers play an important role in computer encryption now the new prime number is more than 22 million digits long Put five, that in your Wi-Fi password. Yeah, five <laughs> million longer than the previous l- largest known prime. Now, primes this large could prove to be useful in the future. <laughs> I'm sure they will be. Now, look, I've got a uh, little graphic here of... This is obviously just a snippet of the number. <laughs> now, the discovered prime... Now, if you want to write this number down... You can write it down in uh, in short form or in, I don't know what they call it, mathematical notation, is that what they call it? So yeah. so there it is there. It's 2 to the power of 74,207,281 minus 1. So that's how, apparently that's how they get the computer to uh, know if they've struck a prime, is, to, is times it by 2 and then minus 1 and then see if it can divide by itself or anything else so there you go 
Large prime numbers are important in computer encryption and make help and help make sure that all your little online banking and your shopping and private messages are secure. I'm not sure they're going to be using the, the 27 million character one, but uh, the prime is too large to be practical use it today, but it's somehow in the future, you never know your luck. You never know your luck in a big city. Searching for large prime numbers is intensive work for computers, processors, and can have unexpected benefits. So you might be thinking, oh, why are we searching for prime numbers? <laughs> That's big. It's crazy. So one prime number, one prime project discovered that there was a problem in the computer processes that, that only showed up in certain circumstances. So looking for prime numbers can show faults in a in a CPU. So that's one, one good reason to go looking for them. Now back to Netflix, I've got their financials up here for um, 12 months ending December 31, 2015. Mm. Their total revenues, 6.8 billion. Yep. Is that what you said? Is that what you calculated out to be your No, I calculated eight point nine, but right. maybe they've got lower um, lower subscription costs in other countries. Yes. Um, marketing. They've classified marketing as a cost of revenue, mm-hmm. and it is it's come in. You're going to believe this at four point five billion. So I'm suspecting that means content. Well, yes, yes, marketing. Right. Yeah, yeah. Content, uh, advertising, development. That Why wouldn't they stipulate that though? Is there a? a, a oh, little... Sorry, no. Start again. I read that wrong. Cost of revenues four point six billion. It doesn't say what that is, so I'm assuming that's content. Marketing on its own is eight hundred and twenty-four million. Mm. Technology six hundred and fifty million. So that's a lot. Yeah, that'd be that's for their band bandwidth and servers and Akamai and all that sort of the distribution hubs. Yeah. Yeah. General and admin, I'd say that'd be your salaries, etc. Yep. Um, T rents, etc. Four hundred and seven million. Mm. So that's pretty high. Uh, operating income before interest and taxes is three hundred and five million dollars. Over revenue of six point eight billion, and that is, I'll tell you what percentage that is, five percent. That's still pretty low, though, isn't it? Would, would you be happy with yeah, that? Yeah, it's pretty low. Um, I suppose these days, big corporates, if you can make 10% after tax, you'd all be all right. right. Yeah, okay. Yeah, between 5 and 10% after tax. Yeah, right, yeah. But look, it's more than that. If you put your money in your bank, you wouldn't be getting it. Oh, no. No, that's so. right. What's the interest rates these days? About 1.2% or something? So uh, in America, it's zero. For credit interest as well. Oh, I suppose it yeah, would have to be. five, half a percent. Yeah, it would have to be, wouldn't it? Yeah. For, oh. Well, for residential mortgages it is anyway. I don't know what it is a business. No, but, but uh, for, for credit they've funds. Got, um, they've but, got interest income of $132 million, so they've got some money in the bank. Mm. Uh, actually, plus uh, interest and miscellaneous income, another $31 million. Uh, then tax was $20 million. Right. Uh, and then net income, blah blah blah. Why aren't they? Why aren't they bloody double Dutch Irish sandwiching? Oh, they huh? probably are. That's why it's so low. Yeah. <laughs> oh, get that old ham sandwich. All right, That's good, it. good stuff. Uh, there you go. Yeah. All right, uh, Shane. Have we, have we put anyone to sleep with numbers yet? No, but I mean, why have we touched on movies and and blockbusters and stuff? Hmm. Have, did you get around to seeing Star Wars, Eric? What did we think? I have. I have seen it. Um, I expected a lot. So I was slightly disappointed, but I still liked it. I was probably yeah. expecting too much, what, but I still liked it. What were you expecting? What What could it have done better? I don't better? know. You know how you think, oh, this is going to be the best movie yeah. ever and bloody... Yeah. Blah, Nudity. Blah, right. You went to a cinema. No. You, d- you didn't buy it off a $2 little hockey shop no, no, horse-drawn straw cart. I went, yeah. and saw, I went and saw it in VMAX. Nice. So... Big cinema. Yeah, nice, nice. Sound was good. No, no so they, I just, look, I expected a lot because it's been so long since I've watched a Star Wars movie, number one. Hmm. Number two, <coughs> the second lot of three that they brought out, which is supposed to be the prequels, were rubbish. Yeah, they were rubbish. So I was expecting it to be as good as the very first one that I saw in 1978 when I was 15. Yep, yep, yep. And, look, it was still good. And... Uh, but I don't know. Um, I'd see it again. Hmm. 
Well, I, I didn't know they had VMAX in North Korea. So, good on them. Uh, Shane, <laughs> what, <laughs> what have you got for us? I was sitting next uh, to DT. <laughs> <laughs> right. You better watch it to get his head blown off. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> The next one I'll do is an Apple story. Apple experimenting with Li-Fi technology <laughs> on future iPhones. Now, what is mean? what is Last Li-Fi? First out. Is the sweet potato <laughs> going to do anything with Li-Fi? He might do. <laughs> well, oh, let's hang on. I hope Garth. Hello, Garth. I hope you're listening. And uh, happy New Year to you, um, Garth. If Timmy Cook's still there, they'll be doing do no Li-Fi, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I caught up with Garth through the week. Oh, did you? We'll yeah. tell you about it later. Been, oh no, no, he's, he's enjoying your um, your uh, uneducated views on Apple. <laughs> <laughs> oh, touche. <laughs> All right, sorry, Shane. You're, you're wrong, but touche. <laughs> yes. uh, keep going. He, he hasn't mentioned it in the show. I've been listening the last couple just to see whether he'd actually oh, look, have a you know, Garth. A Garth is, Garth's attitude at the moment would be, I'm not going to lower myself to his level. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I wouldn't know about that. I think it's coming. <laughs> <laughs> you think you think it's a si- it's the silence before the storm? He said he hadn't listened to the last one with you in it yet. He says he's going to go and listen, and he will respond. <laughs> oh, good. I, I await your response. And if you can get the uh, podcast up, uh, you know, maybe less than you know less than uh, a week after it's been <laughs> produced, then maybe I'll listen to you as well. No. <laughs> He gets them up pretty fast. Uh, I'll tell you what the hold-up is later on. Uh, now, Shane, sorry. Let's yes, go. that's right. All right, Li-Fi, they've, go for they've, it. They've probably already released the technology by now. Um, <laughs> uh, an, eagle-eyed Twitter, <laughs> an eagle-eyed Twitter user has spotted a code that reveals Apple is experimenting with some awesome technology for future iPhones. When looking at the operating system library cache file... Uh, a place which has stored something temporarily in a computing environment. Chase, which is this guy who stumbled across this, Chase from discovered the code. Li-Fi testing is already imminent. May appear in the next iPhone 7 according to iOS code in iOS 9.1 firmware, the user wrote. Li-Fi refers to the light-based technology that delivers high-speed communications. Data is transmitted rapidly modulating a light source which is then received by a photosensitive detector before being decoded into an electronic signal. This uh, method of of dissecting the hey, this method is distinctly different from established forms of wireless communication, such as Wi-Fi, because it doesn't use radio frequency signals trans- to transmit the data. In oh, I hate to kind of get you on a technicality, but radio and light are technically the same thing. Uh, in November last year, an independent study tested Li-Fi capabilities and discovered it was able to transmit data at one gigabit per second, making it 100 times faster than Wi-Fi. Well, they should hey. the NBN should grab that and then throttle it like they're going to do mm. and then charge us extra to bring it up to speed. What do you reckon? Like they're doing with uh, our cable right now, Glenn. Yeah, that's right. Well, I'd be... I, I, can't, I don't understand how someone has got enough time, so this Twitter person, whoever they, he or she may be, that can just... His name is Chase From. From where? Glenn. <laughs> That's his name, Chase From. He was chased from Apple because he... Already... Chased from work, by the sound of it, because you're not doing anything. That's right. So he's, he's gone through the code. He's gone through... Has spotted a code that reveals Apple's experimenting with some... Okay, when looking at the operating system's library cache file, why would you? Why would you be looking at that? He must be right into that he's, stuff. He's, eh? he's probably a techie. He's probably a programmer. He might be a, one of these guys that develops um, that the, you know the iPhone uh, oh, the yeah. hacking software. So he's probably going, "Oh, I got to get around here," and he discovered that. Mm. Yeah, tripped yeah. over it. Yeah, fair enough. So uh, yeah, LifeWay. So is it? So sorry, Shane. Is it? Is it going to benefit us in the long run? Yeah. Well, obviously, it's going to be a lot faster. And I mean, just to touch on what Eric just said about the throttling and all that kind of stuff. Where I was saying, I think I said it before the show, where um, there's an NBM provider that actually provides 100 up, 100 down. I understand how that actually works is that the 
fiber, optic fiber can actually handle transmit speeds from I think 400 up and 400 down and they just kind of throttle it back to 100 up and 100 down. So somewhere kind of in the near future, the people that have got they the want redundancy. That's why. Premises. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. They want. Yeah, they want redundancy. Likely. Build. They want building redundancy. The fiber optic that they're laying for the NBN, that the one that goes straight to the home, not the node, fiber to the home. That they, they those those fiber optic cables can do ten gigabits. That's oh, wild, right. isn't it? Yeah. But I suppose it has to. It has to be something pretty awesome. It's I'll light. Be... It light yeah. It's a light-based technology. How can it not? Yeah, and yeah. isn't that like 10 gigabits just on one c- colour or something? Like you can have like uh, seven... Yeah, look, I think it's more. I think they yeah, can it's... fit more more per per whatever they call whatever. it, strand or whatever. That's, yeah, I think you're right. But, yeah, right. and they throttle it. They throttle it to 100 now, because they want, built in, they want built-in redundancy. Now, this Li-Fi, so it's not... Wi- well, it's wireless, but it, it, it's... How does it? But who invented this? But what, like, so is it wireless or not, or is it a, is it cabled? No, it, it's wireless. Basically, where I sort of, yeah, you know, tongue in cheek said that um, the Li-Fi or the radio thing is different. The electromagnetic spe- spectrum covers you know everything from you know your infrared all the way through to your you know your radio waves, your visible light, and then ultraviolet light up into X rays and gamma rays. But it's all the same electromagnetic spe- spectrum so technically light and radio frequencies are the same thing because they're both electromagnetic um so they, they might be just using a different um a different area of the spectrum or yeah. worked out a different way to capture the spectrum but if but what what sort of what i didn't understand is that one of the points here and it says uh, that it's it, data is transmitted by ra- rapidly modulating a light source, which is then received by a photosensitive detector. Well, for something for point A and point B to see a light source, wouldn't they have to see each other? It can't be around the corner. So well, that's how optic fiber works. It, it yeah, the optic fiber doesn't have to be straight. Yeah, but it's in the same strand, so it it's it's travelling along a a, a, a route. So, you, so how does the light just t- in the air? Does it does it just travel along the air? Uh, yeah, well, that's I that's where I reckon it comes in. That's where I reckon that it'll have a frequency attached to it, and mm. that's the only way. Because if you tune your phone to capture everything on eight oh five, and we're going to send at eight oh five, I'll capture that. Bang! There it is, one gigabit per second. Right, right. But because otherwise, it'd just be it'll be a crap. Sh- it'll be a turkey. You're just being oh, where is it? Yeah, yeah, it'd be all over the show. All right. <laughs> But yeah. the other thing is what you said, Glenn, about the different colours doing different things. That's how the, the one of the differences, say, between CDs and Blu-rays and, and the other technology, primarily they the main way they actually got more data is they just changed the colour of the laser. I think blue, you can do more data transfer with a blue laser than you can with a red laser. Yeah, right. Red's always supposed to go faster, isn't it? Apparently, yeah. <laughs> it's it's quite quite way. Way. <laughs> now, uh, Minecraft is going to launch an education edition. The product will offer teachers new ways to use world building a video game in a range of subjects. So it says uh, it's already got seven thousand seven thousand classrooms around the world already that use Minecraft in some form. So they're going to tweak it, make it an education edition. Apparently, teachers are using this Minecraft to do many things, including teaching maths, science. Religion, don't know how that would work. And poetry, don't know how that would work. Uh, but anyway, it must. Micro, my, Minecraft Edu. Edu. Is that how you pronounce the little shortening of education? Edu. Edu. Yeah, okay. Minecraft Edu already allows teachers to modify content in the game and use a shared library of education themed assets. Well, there you go. So, look, everyone's into Minecraft. I, I actually met a little person, a child, the other day that does not like Minecraft. I nearly really nearly fell over. Well, yep. and what was that person's interest? Were they Amish? <laughs> no, no. I, was their last was their last name Trump? No, <laughs> no, I don't think so. Now, uh, yeah, so that's pretty much all there is to there. Uh, children will need to use their own device. They have their own Office ID, Office three six five ID. So, yeah, so the Microsoft is getting in the universities. 
playing uh, uh, charities and now also getting people to sign up with an office ID to do Minecraft. EDU. Mm. Excellent. Okay. Uh, Shane, do you play Minecraft? No. Can't see the point of it. You, there's no scoring. No one wins. So, yeah, can't see the point of it. No. Well, you better tell us about the HoloLens. All right, no worries. Microsoft augmented reality headset called the HoloLens uh, has already won over a number of fans eager to try the device, but details about how it works have been scarce. However, a few more bits of information about the HoloLens leaked during a recent event in Tel Aviv, Israel, courtesy of Bruce Harris. Doesn't sound kind of Jewish. Not Ross. Um, a technical evangelist at Microsoft. Didn't leave it on a pub stool. No, or it doesn't no. say, but I don't think so. No. The device will offer roughly five, five to five and a half hours of battery life when working on Word documents or email, and about two, two and a half hours when using it for high-intensive uh, computational work involving detailed renderings. Not sure why no. you want to wear it using a Word, you know, mucking around with a Word document. I was going to ask anyway. that same question. You would just immerse yourself into the story. The, yeah, the, probably. The report. <laughs> Imagine I, I could wear it and then just, just bathe in the Netflix, Netflix profit figures. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the video that disclosed these details has since been removed, but in uh, Ennett Harris has also confirmed that the HoloLens doesn't get warm because it is built to disp uh, dissipate the heat. So it's got like a... Um, Sweat paneling around it. A dissipator and or a, or a radiator. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> grill. Put and some coolant. Device. Hang on a minute, I've got to put some coolant in. <laughs> <laughs> and the device has no option um, for a wired connection, so it's going to be wireless and no matter what. Hmm. Wi-Fi, it'll lose Wi-Fi. Li <laughs> yeah, it probably. could. It might. Uh, it Harris also can... Be? Pretty good. Harris also confirmed that the HoloLens can connect to anything, there we go, with Wi-Fi or Bluetooth connectivity, including, it includes 3D audio and will only offer English support for the first version. That's going to annoy a few people. That'll please Donald. Uh, we, yeah, <laughs> true. <laughs> we also addressed uh, questions, he also addressed questions regarding the HoloLens field of view. Uh, saying that the experience is like having a 15-inch monitor about this far away from your face and this far is um, fairly close. I mm. thought I actually had it there. Um, from your face, at which point he holds uh, his hands about a foot, yeah, go about a foot in front of his face. Back in December, Microsoft made the HoloLens available to the public for uh, to test with um, it, at its Fifth Avenue flagship store in Manhattan, uh, but at a price of $3,000 a pop. The device is uh, really more for developers rather than the general consumer market at this stage. The HoloLens uh, is scheduled to begin shipping to developers in the first quarter of 2016. Well, I, think I wonder if the developers in this second tranche will get them cheaper, Glenn. I don't know. I I'd rather spend three grand on a, a HoloLens than that Google Glass, defunct Google Glass. Yes, me but, too. Um, but you look like a bit of a douche walking around with a HoloLens. Or you could, you do. You probably would. Yes. Yeah. Uh, now look, if you if you are walking around and you see all your little kitties on the iPads and the iPhones, they're texting away like mad. Well, Ask FM, Ask dot FM, is uh, put out a list of their top teenage slang that's being used now I'll, i've got some of it here and some of it i've never heard of i wonder what if you guys have heard of it uh any of it or oh, whatever probably not but uh if i said to you goat g-o-a-t greatest no idea that's that's something i call um people for example who are unobjective about apple products <laughs> a, uh, goat. a greatest of all time that's what it means all right. though <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, there's other ones like Pap, Post a Picture, and uh, Netflix and Chill, a hookup. Uh, bad means good, savage means extremely good, no chill means irrational. TBR, to be rude. Slept, 
knocking someone out, missing something good, or being high. <laughs> uh, ship. Not just, no, it doesn't mean sleep. No, no, it means uh, high, getting high. Uh, I deck, I don't even know. I K R, I know, right? I knew that one. I know, right? I knew that one. A frog and coffee cup emojis together means I'm, I'm, just, I'm saying, just saying, but that's none of my business. That just makes no sense whatsoever. No. And SMH, shaking my Sydney head. Morning Herald. <laughs> and Dime, a kind of approval rating on a score of 1 to 10. So, so there you go. Now, the last story this week, as I think everyone else has finished, haven't they? Well, we, I have. Before we move on away from like words of the year and all that kind of stuff, did you see that the Macquarie Dictionary came out with their word of the year of um, Captain's Call? That's two words. But is that what it was? Yeah, Captain's Call is their word of the year. Nice. But it's two words, so they got that wrong. Yeah. I don't go by the Macquarie Dictionary. I follow the Oxford. Oxford is probably the more precise Oxford Dictionary. And probably the more <laughs> educated one, rather than the old good old Aussie Macquarie Dictionary, mate. Isn't the Oxford Dictionary, like in its true form, like a massive beast of a book? Like yes. it's Like it's huge. Like yeah. It's it huge. Is. And oh, is that why they have the concise and the precise? I guess. <laughs> I don't know. I guess so. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, cap, yeah. Why would they? Why would they do two words? Do they hyphenate school. it? They must have hyphenated it. They like it. they like Gillard. They're Gillard fans. The Macquarie Dictionary. Well, wouldn't that be pushing Tony Abbott's barrow? Or no? No, no but that that, that, that um that um that term was first invented by our friend. I reckon that the, if they're going to pick words, <coughs> two words, and not even uh, adhere to their rules like that, why not? Why, why, why not uh, shirt fronting? That was a good word. That was great. That was his word. That didn't get in. No, but that's... <laughs> but, that's but that's not a new word. No, I know. But it, it was good. A bit of the old shirt funny would never go astray. Anyway, now here's, why, here's the one to get your teeth into. Last one. 61 I, agencies... I know about this and oh, it just drives me crazy. It is. It's pretty crazy. 61 agencies want access to the metadata. Now you think, you know... Not going to get it. Well, hopefully not. Like you think, okay, the police and and the, F, uh, the FBI, the uh, the uh, the border force, and all this sort of stuff. Yep, that's fair enough. But anyway, so a Fred, a privacy, a, a privacy advocate. This guy by the name of Geordie Guy, not not Geordie Shaw, but Geordie Guy. Not Geordie Shaw. Uh, he's uh, done a, a, a whatever you call it. Uh, asked for all this information, freedom of information request. Now, four agency names were redacted as it would be contrary to the public interest to release them. So I wonder who they were. Those well, four... The most obvious ones, be the, um, the ones that aren't mentioned, is probably, you think about it, who aren't mentioned. Well, the agency in question include federal bodies. So this is the, peop- this is the bodies that have asked for metadata. Work out for yourself why these good people would need access to metadata. The Civil Aviation Safety Authority... Uh, well, that would be for terrorism. Okay. Clean energy regulator. Right. None of their business. Terrorism. Blowing up electricity plant. That's probably the angle no. they're going to come energy. at. Clean oh, energy. Clean energy. The climate solar plants. Stuff like that. <laughs> it be the climate change wankers. <laughs> the uh, tax office. Well, understandable. Uh, in why would they need to know why? Uh, the uh, tax fraud and uh, things like uh, you know, for example, you've got certain individuals that come from certain countries that live in certain areas, have no jobs, but drive very expensive mm-hmm. cars. And they're all ordering Irish double sandwiches. Yes. Now, the National so, Measurement Institute. None of their business. The Australian Financial Security Authority. Okay. Fair enough. And the Department of Agriculture. Defence. None of their business. Mm-hmm. Defence, yeah. fair enough. Environment, Environment, none of their business. Health. Health, none of their business. Human services. Human services, none of their business. Uh, fraud. Hmm? Oh, yeah, fraud, okay. Social, Social services. services, depending. Foreign, foreign affairs. affairs, fair enough. And trade. Okay, that's fair enough, Maybe. foreign affairs. Because foreign affairs is basically the, hmm? the diplomatic source or the spies. Right, so let's, let's be honest. The list also includes bodies such as the Bankstown City Council. <laughs> None of their business. Racing New South Wales. None of their business. Racing Queensland, Greyhound Queensland. Racing Victoria, RSPCA <laughs> Victoria, none of their business. Taxi Services Commission, none of their business. Jeez, Victoria. The Victorian people want to know everything. There. So anyway. Victorian government, very left wing. That's communi- That's communism. That's what it is. It's Big Brother. It's the, it's the, the brown shirts of East Berlin. <laughs> 
they, they all want our f- 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 metadata. Okay. Oh, I'm glad I don't live in Victoria. The government cut down on the amount of agencies able to ask telcos for that data. Blah blah blah. So anyway, so that's that's what it's all about. So go, they're going, they're coming after our data. So uh, look, hopefully the you know everything will just calm down and uh, stay on a VPN. Yeah, that's all I can say. That's right. Stay constantly attached to a VPN. Mm. All right. Well, I, I think... reckon I could throw any topic to you, Eric, and you'd be able to kind of dwindle it down to either left wing or right wing politics. No, you're wrong. You're being left wing about that. <laughs> <laughs> he's just assuming. He's assuming the worst. <laughs> no, that's no, very simple. The more the people that want to overgovern you are usually left wing, and the people that want to leave you alone are usually right wing. Comes mm. down. It's that simple. Mm. All right, well, I think we're out of time for this show. So thanks for joining us. You can find us on the facebook.com forward slash Aussie Tech Heads, youtube.com forward slash Aussie Tech Heads. Don't forget the Aussie Tech Radio, some great uh, additions, or not not additions, but new episodes. Shows are starting to pretty much get in the full swing for 2016. Look, there's one I, I want to give you a special heads up about one because it's very interesting. It's rather in, intellectual. <laughs> Let me have a look here. Uh, how am I going to find this? Uh, I don't know. Hang on, I have to load up my iTunes, I suppose. But other shows on there uh, would be Ask the Aussie Max Zone. Don't forget to listen to that, download that. The Aussie Tech Security, another episode today uh, or this week. So when you're hearing me, there'll be a new episode of Aussie Tech Security and we talk about business continuity in this episode, which is quite interesting. It's, it's um, probably not as much IT related as you as you may hope that the the topic is but it's a uh, gives you a good understanding of maybe what you could do to make sure your business continues along the line of operation if a if a event a natural natural disaster or some other type of event uh the the you know the uh, death of employees or whatever might happen now this podcast to listen out for you can subscribe to it obviously uh, through the uh, through the web page, but the pot, but the one that's coming up, and he's got he's done quite a few that are, I'll play one a week, and it's called Let's Talk Leadership with Des Walsh. Now Des lives on the Gold Coast, and I, I know Des. He's a he's a nice guy, and he gets he's a LinkedIn guru, and he gets in and talks to quite a lot of interesting people. So uh, look. Google that if you're interested or listen to it on the AussieTechRadio.com because it is really, really good. Uh, and that's about it, isn't it? Don't forget, yeah, everything. <laughs> so, so that's about it. So you can email us, of course, and uh, we'll be back next week. So thank you, Shane and Eric. Thanks, Shane, for coming in and spending time with us. No problem. No worries at all. Still haven't heard from um, PepsiCo about my free Pepsi or anything yet. Um, so I'm still waiting for that. It's in the post. The the, the yeah. parcels in the post, and uh, things in the mail. And thanks also, Eric. I will let you have, s- have some catch up sleep before you. Oh, you are back at work. So um, yes, I'm back at work. Mm, okay. All right. Well, thanks for downloading and thanks for listening. And leave us a review on iTunes if you desire. Okay. Yes, please do yeah. review iTunes. Uh, you know the good, bad, anything in between. Yeah, whatever. You know, but we good we, feedback. If it's critical, that's okay. We we you like call the me a, cli- a, a climate denier or a <laughs> right wing nut job. That's fine. Yeah, knock yourself out. Just don't put your address on it. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't care. You're all no. entitled to your opinion. Oh, that's right. Exactly. Now, all right. So uh, until next week, it's uh, bye from all of us. Bye bye.